Here I am making um, a large architectural piece for a new company that I'm working for called Locker and Riley. And they're geographically quite close to me, so which is a good thing because they can just pop down for five minutes, have a quick look and keep a check on the process and then go away. Or, or if there's any alterations, again, I can pop up there and have a quick chat, which is a good thing. Um, and I hope I can build a good working relationship with them as they seem to be getting a lot of work from um, Dubai and Qatar and places like this, so it'd be very nice to work for them. Now, Locker and Riley are basically a company who deal with plaster, is it architectural moulding? Um, uh, I think traditionally they're used to doing quite small pieces and very neat and sort of build up of, of plaster sections, but in this particular case, um, in Qatar, uh, I think they actually want it to go about 3.5 metres wide each section. Uh, so this is one of the first pieces that I'm drawing up. Um, I'm actually making it, um, I scaled it up here on the tissue paper, and then I'm going to transfer this tissue paper image down onto the polystyrene, which I'm going to be carving it from. Um, and, and then I'm going to be cutting out the polystyrene around its peripheral of the image itself. And this in total, as I said, is 3.5 metres long, and this is one of the first of six pieces that we're doing. Uh, very ornate, um, but I know that Locker and Riley are very uh, fastidious in, in terms of they want the detail and the accuracy of the lines and now you see it and now you don't kind of feel. Now, in some ways I'm a little bit concerned because when I deal with theatre companies or film, they're seen from 40 foot or on television or, you know, it's a long distance thing. But I know that Locker, uh, is it Locker and Riley are very keen on having it very crisp and very smart because it will be seen from a distance so they want the impact of that 3D and the nice flowing forms but they also want the, the attention to detail and, and smoothness because as, as some occasions it is going to be seen close up as well so um, yeah I'm going to take my time um, and, and be conscientious as possibly can and, and pay attention to the detail which I think the architectural companies are looking for as regards to what I think they might be looking for um, which is a, a real difference. So I'll invite them down all the time so they can see the process of, of the whole happening and, uh, and they can keep an eye on it and uh, really and truly I just want to make sure that they're happy with what I'm doing before it goes into mould making. And I believe they're going to take silicon moulds and then produce it in plaster and then fly it out there and hang it up. Um, so yeah, Locker and Riley, thank you very much for the work and this is the beginning stages. Here we are having a look at the architect's drawings. These are very small drawings, so we um, choose one individual piece to start with and then we transfer them full scale onto polystyrene. Once we have the peripheral of the polystyrene cut out, I then go to work with a hot wire and establish some sort of depth. This is a very enjoyable part of the process. Um, and it always reminds me of why I am doing my particular job as a sculptor. During the whole process of carving the polystyrene, I revert back to the original image to make sure I'm doing it correctly. On the second piece, um, we send the, the images to the architects and they decide to add on more or take away or make some certain changes which wasn't on the original brief. As usual, each and every stage is a lengthy process from the carving to the sanding, applying the plaster and then trying to get a finish. It takes a very, very long time to achieve the finish required as uh, many architectural companies work clo uh, quite close detail, but these were always going to be at a distance, so they wanted a really theatrical, dramatic effect. But as I said before, trying to get a, a reasonable finish on top of polystyrene um, is a very lengthy process. Once again, once we finish the polystyrene and before we add the plaster, we send an image to the client 
uh, and as usual they make um, alterations to the heart's content which is uh, it's quite annoying really because if they um, done the drawings as they wanted in, in the beginning then we wouldn't have to keep making alterations but I guess they don't really know what they want until they see it I enjoy this part of the job as um, as I generally come back in the evening and I can sculpt on my own without any interruptions at telephones and, uh, and clients coming around uh, so I can really get my head and, and my heart into it um, sketching the image onto a large scale format, blocking it out and then starting um, to work on the polystyrene itself. This particular piece is what we call a handed image. Um, so whatever I'm creating on this piece, which is the left hand, I've then got to uh, create a duplicate on the mirror side on the right hand side so it gets even more difficult um, to get them looking the same. Throughout the whole project um, I use this tracing image so I can actually um, transfer and look through the job and to make sure I'm actually keeping to the project instead of just carving what I want to. It's important for me to keep some sort of discipline when I'm carving um, as your mind will stray and do what it wants to do otherwise. Now as an artist I think I'm allowed to have a little bit of artistic license and when you're working of an evening you can have a bit of fun because there's nobody else to talk to and you have a little dance and when you've released that little bit of tension off you go again and uh, carry on with the work. Now although this was um, the smallest part of the job, the corbel, we scaled it up from this drawing, cut it out from polystyrene and invited the client down to see that which they okayed. Now from there we sent it to the architects and they wished the neck of the actual image to be about another 800 mil or thereabouts. Uh, so we extended from this particular original one which we thought be, we had finished and then down to the extended version um, which I hope that Locke and Riley are now happy with. Now taking on such a project as this, this is very architectural so it, it needs to be correct and there's a lots of terminologies and rules and regulations which govern the architectural field so there is a lot of disciplines to learn there's a lot of terms like uh, egg and dart and acanthus and entasis and voluted and all this kind of thing but i have learned a lot and i've really enjoyed it so thank you very much indeed locker and riley for the work